everybody. My name is Yelena Zmolodchikova. I'm the head of uh, the action department at Zuckerman Hapsicords. And uh, today uh, we are going to make a video showing you how to properly cut uh, jacks. And this is one of the methods that you can use. Uh, we find it the most efficient and um, precise one. Um, it does take some time and it does take some uh, accuracy uh, but so I guess does almost any kind of uh, job you do in the instrument and um, I hope you find it really useful. Thank you. So our first step in the jack cutting is to put all the jacks we have uh, of the uh, register that we're cutting upside down in the right slots. In this case we're having a French double so I have three uh, choirs. So I have three registers and three sets of jacks. I'm going to show you how to cut the back eight for now. Um, at this point we already did all, completed all the stringing, completed all the pinning and most importantly we put the registers, we set the registers wh where they should be. Now, this is crucial that when you cut your jacks, your, the register that you are working on has to be in the on position for this process. Now, I'm going to take my jack tray and put the jacks, start putting the jacks up to me. Now, another thing. When you have your back eight jacks, they typically pluck the quilt goes to the left and plucks the string on the left. So I'm going to put them upside down, keeping the same side. So I'm not this. This would be the wrong side of the jack. I'm putting. I'm keeping the right side of the jack, facing the right direction when I'm doing this. Now we're ready for the step two. Uh, in this case, we need to take out one jack and determine the jack length for that one jack, and this will be our point of reference for the rest of them. So I'm going to take out the middle C jack. And put it the usual way, not upside down anymore just as it would go, as it should go in there, facing left, because our core goes to the left. And now I'm going to measure the distance from the quill, from the qu where the quill will go, to the string. On the ruler, I'm marking the distance from the string to the place where the quill will go in the jack, approximately. This distance is how much we tentatively need to cut first time. The next step is I pulled out the same jack and I'm going to measure this distance that I marked on the ruler I'm going to measure it from the bottom of the jack and this is where I will make my first cut. At this point we have to cut off from the jack at the point where we marked. So here's the jig that I'm using for the jack cutting. It's pretty much just a cut out piece of wood. And I have to align my marking with the edge of this piece of wood where I'm putting my jack. And once that's done, I have to hold the jack tight. Done. 
Now this is the first cut. Our jack is longer than it should be, but we need to check how much longer and how much we need to take off. For that purpose, we need to put our first quill in. So I'm putting up, taking out one quill. Pushing it in and just literally cutting quill to the length. There's no no voicing is necessary. I'm just eyeballing it. Now what happens is I cut it purposefully too long because it's easy to cut shorter but if you cut too short you pretty much have to um, take a new jack and do the whole thing all over again. So I cut it a little bit longer now it's almost exactly right under the string there's no distance between the top of the quill to the bottom of the string but that tells me how much I need to cut off and uh, I'm probably going to um, at this point you have to be very careful because it's easy to cut off too much and then you have to re uh, recycle the jack um, so I'm eyeballing it I'm just going to literally snip off a very 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 tiny amount that's a tricky thing to do. I actually feel it the length with my finger how much I need to cut and it's very very small. Maybe it's thickness of a nail. Done. Also if you're doing this first time and you don't have a feel yet you have to be even more careful. Now we're gonna check out how our jack is working out. So it's better but it's still not it's still not sh short enough so I'm going to sneak off a little bit more you know maybe nail thickness okay now at this point that feels pretty good, but um, I don't usually just trust my feeling, I always measure. Now what you measure is the distance from the top of the quill to the string. And it has to be 1 16th of an inch. So I'm putting, here I'm putting my ruler on top and seeing where it is and see if my 1 16th line on the ruler is pretty much lining up with the string and it is so this is perfect this is where it should be step four is to find the right block of wood or it might be um, whatever a piece of some fairly hard material that is the same thickness all over the, its length. Um, now, the thickness should be the same as the amount of the, as the length of the jack that is sticking above the strings, because we are going to measure how much we have to cut off the rest of the jacks from the strings. Now this one, I'm putting it on and I'm aligning it with the top of the jack and I can feel with my finger it's a little bit too long. It has to be a little bit shorter to allow space for the line to be made. So I'm putting it back on and it's pretty much where it should be. It's a, just a tiny bit shorter than the sticking out jack. As you can see, just a tiny bit. 
So now what I do with it? I draw the line on the four adjacent jacks using this block. Now, there are two absolutely crucial things while you're doing that. First of all, you cannot press on your jig while you're doing this because that will change where your line will be drawn. And second of all, sometimes you might accidentally um, push on your keys and that will raise the jacks. Of course, if you draw the line now, you'll cut the jack way too short. Jack goes into the garbage. Um, so you have to watch for these two things. Not to push down, not to push down. Now, once we're all ready, and also make sure that all your jacks are really laying on the end of your key, they're not going down. Now we're ready to mark. And I'm pretty much just lightly marking. If marker needs some help. Just lightly marking the... Now our step 5 for jack cutting. We marked out a few jacks. We'll have to do it little by little. So now we're going to cut the next jack. And in this case, the way we cut, which is again pretty important, is that we do not cut off the line. We cut just up to the line, so the line stays on the jack. This is what it will look like. And also, it's easier in this case, I can see my line on the right next to the edge of my cutting jig. And I'm gonna make it disappear, so you can't see it anymore. And then I'm gonna... Now the next step is to do the same thing as we already did with the first jack. We're going to put the quill in and to see how good of a job we did. So the quill is in, cut to the length, we're dropping the jack and checking. The way I'm checking the jacks is I do it with my finger because I know the feel, how much it should feel, and it feels really good. I think I cut them exactly where it should be. But if you do not trust your feel, which is very understandable, take a ruler and check with the ruler again. So we're checking the jack again. Rule with the ruler. Yeah, that's where it should be. So we cut the second jack. The rest of the jacks is cut in a similar manner. Um, always try to stay on the longer side. It's really easy to cut the jack shorter. Uh, also, in when you go more in the treble, your strings will be thinner. So your distance, this distance was actually reduced a little bit since we depend on the string thickness. Uh, so you have to be even more careful with not cutting them too short and making sure that when you cut your line stays there and maybe even a little bit space above the line. You can always cut it shorter if you feel like it's too long. So this is how you cut the back eight jacks. Uh, the front eight is cut in a similar manner and uh, the forefoot has a little bit difference because it's trickier. Thank you very much for watching this video and please stay tuned for more instructional videos on uh, other kinds of work on the instrument. Have a good day!